So oh, we saw nitration, we saw bromination, there could be sulfonation as well. On phenol, if you are adding sulfuric acid, then this sulfuric acid, then two sulfuric acid molecule will protonate, one will protonate the other and we are going to get sulfonium ion. And that sulfonium ion is going to act as an electrophile and come to para position because of repulsion at ortho position. So this is your product. This kind of addition and the mechanism through which this electrophile gets added on the benzene ring because it's not very simple. I, I mean, there's a hydrogen here, then that hydrogen has to be replaced somehow and aromaticity has to be regenerated because th that mechanism we have seen in great details when we studied electrophilic aromatic substitution on benzene ring in the chapter of hydrocarbon. So if you're not very, if you're not at home with what's happening, so uh, that means you haven't studied the chapter of hydrocarbon. That means you have to go back and study them. And if you haven't studied, there shouldn't be any problem in understanding how the sulfonium ion has been inserted at para position. Okay. Okay. Then this extending this idea of the charges at ortho and para position, this phenol has partial negative charge at ortho and para position. There's an important reaction which you will study in detail. Uh, coupling of this phenol with a diazonium salt. Now, uh, this, this reaction, in this reaction, what happens? Uh, azo compound is formed. Now, if you are very much enthusiastic to study this reaction in detail, this chap, this reaction has been taught in the chapter amines. So you can search for a video, formation of azo compound. You'll get a link to a video and you can li listen to the whole thing. What's, what, what happens in great detail there. But here we'll see in very short, uh, uh, and uh, in a terse form and we'll just see one reaction corresponding to this understanding what are the cons what are the significance and consequence of the charge polarities at ortho and para position look this is a azonium salt there will be an anion corresponding th to this we are not concerned with that but this is a as diazonium salt and this nitrogen is a very good leaving group now somehow, if you're not allowing this to leave by keeping the temperature low and not allow adding any other nucleophile into the system, this diazonium salt will remain as it is. But this is not stable because N2 gas wants to come out. What happens in this case is there's a plus charge polarity and if you have added phenol in the same system, then these ortho and para positions have negative charge polarity. Now in that case, there can be some reaction possible. Now this carbon, which has some negative charge polarity, can't come and react with this nitrogen because this nitrogen already is making four bonds and nitrogen did not make fifth bond. So in that case, in the only way to neutralize this nitrogen is to break a pi bond, give its electron to this nitrogen. This nitrogen would be neutralized. But when we do that, this nitrogen in turn will gain a plus charge because you are taking away the electron and putting in the orbital of this nitrogen. Now this carbon can come and react with this nitrogen or put its electron into the orbital of this nitrogen. Because when you break this bond, nitrogen will be making only two bonds and it will be ready to make the third one. So that's how the reaction will occur. Fine. To understand or to gain a greater insight, let's use one of the resonating structure. If you carry on resonance and you bring the charge at para position, this is how the resonating structure is going to look like. Fine. Now here is a diazonium salt. Now this carbon is going to attack this nitrogen and this pi bond is going to break and go into the orbital of this nitrogen. So we have a bonding between carbon and nitrogen like this. Now look, you started with the aromatic 
compound and you have to end up in an aromatic compound. Now, in order to generate aromaticity, the anion, the conjugate anion corresponding to this, to this salt which is present in the system, that will abstract this hydrogen. When you abstract this hydrogen, a negative charge will come here. You'll bring a negative charge here, form a bond here, this negative charge here, a positive charge here, a negative charge on this oxygen, this oxygen will be neutralized. No problem. Try doing it. Abstract hydrogen from here, bring a negative charge at this position and start doing resonance. When you start to do resonance, pi bond will come here, negative charge will come here. Again a pi bond will come here, negative charge will come here, the positive charge already on oxygen will neutralize the oxygen and we will have a structure like this. Now this is called azo compound. Compounds having this N double bond N. Now azo compounds have characteristic intense color. Many of the indicators are used, uh, uh, used in titration are these azo compounds like methyl orange. That is also an azo compound. Now, the, as you can see, the extent of conjugation, this, the, the, there are three pi bonds here, then there's a pi bond with nitrogen and there are three pi bonds in the phenyl ring. So, there are seven pi bonds in conjugation. And because of this conjugation, the, this, this azo compound have a color. Because you must have, you must be knowing that potassium permanganate is purple in color. And the reason for that purple color is the electronic transition between oxygen and manganese. Because electron when it transits from one orbital to another, when it comes down to a lower orbital of lower energy, because when it will be transiting from manganese it will, and to oxygen, it will be transiting from d orbital to p orbital. So it will release some some waves corresponding to the difference in the energy, and this wave will be having a particular wavelength corresponding to the difference in the energy, and that wavelength will correspond to a particular color. So the transition is such that the wave emitted out due to the when electron comes from higher energy to lower energy that corresponds to the wavelength corresponding to the wavelength of purple color. That's why it's purple in color. Similarly, when the electron will transit from one orbital to another, when there's such a big long conjugation, it will keep on releasing energy and gaining energy. When it releases energy, if it releases energy in the visible range, then that will correspond to a particular color. And these azo compounds are such that they are colorful from yellow to orange to red to blue to green. They have some colors. So these azo compounds are particularly important for identification because they also have a characteristics of having different color in different media. They have different color in acidic media. They have different color in basic media. So during titration, when the medium system turns from acidic to basic, then they change color. And that's why they are of importance. And that's why you have to know this coupling reaction, how it occurs.